Do you struggle with a flat crown area and have trouble covering your scalp when refreshing? Well, I'm gonna walk you through a step-by-step -step refresh routine that's packed with tips for covering your scalp and getting more root lift and volume at the crown. If you are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Gina and here I make videos all about naturally curly hair. I love doing these simplified step-by-step -step tutorials, talking about the science of hair, product ingredients, and much more. So I have low density curls naturally, which just means I don't have a ton of hair on my head. It might look like I do at the moment and that's because I do a lot of styling techniques that help me get more fullness and volume. I love getting a lot of root lift right at the scalp area and then also at the back at the crown because I do really struggle with my scalp showing in the back crown area especially when I'm refreshing because naturally the hair gets kind of mashed down in the crown area when we're sleeping and there's some other causes that we will talk about as well. So I've learned a couple tips and tricks for helping you get more of that root volume right at the crown area. I first wanted to preface this by saying that it's completely normal for your scalp to show, especially if you have low density hair. Sometimes it's just going to show, especially when you've been sleeping on it overnight and stuff, it's just naturally going to separate. And some people also have a cowlick in this area, which is just pretty much like a permanent separation in the hair in a certain area. A lot of times it's at the crown. Sometimes people have it right here around their hairline and it's just the way that their hair naturally grows out of your head. So it doesn't mean that you have to fix it, but if it does bother you and you're somebody that does like a lot of root lift and you like that look in your hair, then hopefully these tips will help you out. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing that I wanted to stress is the importance of your styling technique on wash day. I've actually already done a video all about how to cover your scalp when you were styling your hair. So I recommend checking that out. I will have it linked for you down below because the way that you style your hair on wash day definitely makes a difference in how it's gonna look on your next day hair. And it's a lot easier to cover your scalp and get that root volume on wash day than it is to try and fix it on next day hair and try and correct some styling mistakes or some things that you might not have done on wash day because we don't wanna to have to completely soak our hair down and completely restyle it on refresh day. However, a flat and exposed scalp is inevitable sometimes, especially on next day hair. Some of the common causes of a flat crown area include a natural cowlick or a natural parting of the hair, which is what I already mentioned. Another common cause is just neglecting that area on wash day. As I mentioned, if you're not properly styling your curls or you're not really trying to cover your scalp on wash day, then it's likely going to be more exposed on next day hair or look a little bit flatter in that area. Another big culprit is products that are too heavy for your hair. This can cause your hair to be weighed down in general, especially at the root or at the crown area. Maybe you applied too much product in that area, or maybe you're using styling products that are just too moisturizing or have too many heavy ingredients that aren't right for your hair. Another one of the major causes of having a flattened crown area on next day hair is the way that you were protecting your curls at night. I really recommend sleeping in a silk or a satin bonnet or wearing a scarf. There's lots of different ways that you can protect your curls. A pineapple is another really great option with a large satin or silk scrunchie. That way you don't stretch out your curls. There's lots of different ways, but if you're not properly putting on your bonnet or if your hair is just not thick enough or long enough to kind of sit up on top of your head in your bonnet, like if it's not the right size for you, then it could get mashed down in that area. So I do have a video on how to put on a bonnet that I will link for you down below because it does make a big difference in the way that you put it on and the way that your curls sit inside the bonnet for how it's gonna look on next day hair. So the goal is to keep your curls kind of plopped on top of your head and lifted up this way instead of just being mashed. But as I mentioned, it's inevitable your curls are likely going to get mashed in the crown area because a lot of times we sleep on our back. So now that we've covered some of the common causes of your hair getting flattened at the crown, let's dive into the step-by-step -step refresh routine. So when I first take my hair down out of my bonnet in the morning, I like to just take some time to fluff out the roots and lift the hair up off of the head because as I mentioned, your hair can get kind of stuck down against your scalp when it's up in your bonnet. So I just shake out the crown area and reposition the hair over that section. And then just take a look at your hair. And if you're happy with how it looks, then leave it as is. You don't always have to refresh, but I do find that if I refresh, my hair will just last a lot longer throughout the day just to help tame any frizz. So if needed, you can use a dry shampoo. This is from Buclem. It's the Foaming Drive Shampoo. So it's actually a water-based shampoo. I've reviewed this before on my channel, but this helps to absorb any excess oil or sweat and just helps to refresh the scalp. It does also really help to create volume. So sometimes I do add this, but you don't have to. If you don't wanna to add too much product to your hair, I would skip it. Or you could just do this and not add any other product to your hair, whatever works for you. So then I'm just taking some water in a spray bottle and spritzing it over 
over the canopy of my hair. The key with refreshing is you don't want to soak your hair too much because then it's just like you're restyling. I really try and just use as little water as needed. Then if you need to add styling products, I recommend going with the same ones that you used on wash day because they're already in your hair. For this wash day, I use the AG Recoil Cream and the Liquid Effects Gel, which are both really great at refreshing. You can add either one to your hands if needed or just use some water. Sometimes if I do have to add a little bit of extra product, I do dilute it with water in my hands and then I just smooth over the surface of my hair to just start to tame any flyaways. And I also like to gently detangle. I know not everyone detangles when they refresh, but I personally don't like to have all these tangles in my hair. My hair is pretty tangly and I also always have all these loose hairs that really bug me and it just creates a lot of mats. So I try and detangle without disturbing the curl pattern too much. You'll see that I do place my fingers within the hair almost like a comb to just help sort of clump the hair back together and also help detangle without fully restyling my hair. As I mentioned my hair is not that saturated it's just a little bit damp at this point. And if you do need to add some more slip to your hands you can mix in a little bit of cream as I mentioned or some gel, but I really can just use water sometimes. Depending on how much slip that the products have that I use on wash day, sometimes that slip will just come right back when I add water, which makes it really nice to detangle with because you already have that slip there in your hair and just with some water you can gently work through tangles. But you wanna be very gentle with your hair. You'll see that a lot of times I will just pull apart some of the tangles and that just helps instead of just ripping through them. You really wanna be gentle and I definitely recommend using your fingers to detangle because then you can just gradually work through any knots. And you can also use your fingers to help reclump the curls if they're starting to look a bit stringy. I also like to just pick up any frizzy clumps and just help smooth over them. So you'll notice I do a lot of just cupping the hand over that clump and then that just helps to smooth out any frizz and also detangle. You can also do some finger coiling around some face framing pieces if any pieces start to look limp or it can also help to sort of tuck that root frizz into a curl clump if you are experiencing a lot of frizz. Sometimes finger coiling can really be good for that. So I always have to do this around my front pieces. I just separate them and then just recoil them around my finger. So you can also redefine some curls with a brush. I don't do my entire head with this but it does really help to get out any of those really stubborn knots or the really small knots that might be within the curl clump. Sometimes I will gradually work from the bottom up and work out those knots and then use the brush to redefine the curl or the ringlet like I would on wash day. You just have to make sure that you have enough water in your hair to where you can actually rebrush it and also make sure that it's detangled before trying to create a ringlet with a brush. Now moving on to the crown area of my hair, the most important part of this video. I'm using my fingers to pick up sort of like a circular section in this area. You can also pick up a flat horizontal section and just make sure that it's fully detangled and also make sure that your roots are a little bit damp with some water because you can't reshape hair that's dry. It needs to be a little bit wet if you want to sort of restyle it. Then I'm just using my Briogeo brush, which has dense bristles. That's why I picked this brush for this. You want something that has these densely packed bristles for this type of method, where you're really trying to cover the scalp and also create that tension at the root, which is gonna help give you root lift. So I'm just brushing through the strand to make sure there's no knots. Then I place the edge of the brush right at the root and then brush straight up. This is really going to create that root lift right at the crown area and really help lift the hair up off the scalp. And using a brush with those dense bristles does help to cover the scalp because it doesn't create any separation to expose the scalp. So then I just like to use a handheld mirror so I can actually see the back of my head. So I'm looking in my bathroom mirror with the handheld mirror so I can see and make sure that everything is covered in the back. If you do struggle with scalp covering, hopefully this tip helps you out. And if you still see some of your scalp showing, then you might need to pick up some other sections underneath that top crown area just to make sure that everything gets nice and smoothed over with the brush so everything is covered. So after redefining some curls, I'm happy with how everything looks. I'm just gonna go ahead and scrunch right at the root. This is gonna help encourage the curl definition right at the root to keep that hair really lifted. You'll wanna make sure that your hands are wet though because you don't wanna cause any frizz by touching your wet hair with dry hands. So usually my hands are wet during this whole process. You can even have a little bit of gel on your hands when you're going around and scrunching. So one last quick tip, if you're still seeing some of your scalp exposed, another little trick you can do is just take your brush and gently brush over the surface. Now I'm not really disturbing the curls, I'm just sort of using those bristles to create less separation. I'm also scrunching with my hair repair towel, which helps speed up the diffusing process. This really cuts down on the dry time because it absorbs any excess water and product, and it also helps to really encourage those curls. 
So now it's time to diffuse. I'm using my Shark Hyper Air because it has these awesome extendable prongs. You'll want a diffuser attachment that has pretty long prongs so that way you can use them to create even more root lift at the crown. So I usually do some of this at the beginning of the diffusing routine or I do it towards the end where I'll really use those prongs to lift the hair at the root. So I just place the prongs against the scalp and then I lift the hair up and just hold it for a minute. You'll wanna hold it until it starts to feel pretty warm and then you'll wanna take it down and move to another section so I do this all along my part area and you'll see how much difference that it makes in the before and after and then you'll also see that I do it around the crown area of course to lift that area as well it doesn't take me long at all usually to diffuse when I'm refreshing because as I mentioned my hair is actually not that wet as it might look it usually only takes about five minutes 10 max if I use too much water to diffuse my hair on a refresh day but it should be fairly quick if you don't use too much water if I don't diffuse on a refresh day and I just let my hair air dry, it usually ends up frizzy after a couple hours and it doesn't last near as long. The heat does really help to set the curls in that position. So if you're looking for more definition at the root and your hair to stay lifted, the heat does really help with that. So once my hair is completely dry, I will usually fluff it out if I want to scrunch out any of the crunch, but I also like to fluff the roots because it really creates so much volume instantly. You'll just wanna make sure that your hair is completely dry and also make sure that your hair are dry or you have an oil or something on your hands you don't want to be touching your dry hair with wet hands because then that can just make it kind of stick to it and cause more frizz so make sure your hair is completely dry and then just fluff out the roots this creates so much volume instantly and you can even do this throughout the day if you want to create some more volume if it starts to fall flat and also make sure that you're going from the underside layer to prevent frizz on the top layer so here are my final results after refreshing. I definitely have a lot more root lift and volume, especially at the crown area. And my curls look a lot less frizzy overall. And I do have that gel cast back, which is really great because that's going to help protect my curls from frizz, which is great because then I can stretch it a couple more days before rewashing my hair. So the hair is naturally just going to separate and flatten out as the days go on and between our wash days, especially as our hair starts to accumulate some oils at the scalp or we might sweat in between wash days. It's completely normal, as I mentioned in the beginning, for your hair to start to get a little bit flatter as the days go on. So don't worry if you can't stretch your hair to day five or day six like some people. Some people just have to wash their hair more frequently, especially if you're somebody that does just naturally produce more oil and that's okay. Just do what works best for you. But hopefully these tips that did help you out if you are looking to get some more root lift and volume at the crown. So if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, I definitely think you should check out the one that I did all about how to cover your scalp when you are styling. That video is packed with tips for low density curls. And even if you don't have low density hair and you wanna get more volume and root lift, there's lots of tips in there for you as well. So I'll put the video linked here on the screen and I will talk to you over there. Bye everyone.